And so based on the data that you collected using your speed cart over the last year and targeted your deputies into those particular areas to address those issues, what was our return on investment in the number of tickets issued? That I don't have that right now. I would like to see that. I need to see that information to make an important decision. I kind of, see, I struggle with, I need the return on investment. With I struggle with the return on investment with the sheriff's the department with the car contract. Talk about the contract. Radar, that doesn't cost you a dime. I put it out. We don't. We don't build a town. There's that. no investment on your part there. Yeah, but you use it. But our our investment is the sheriff's department contract, and that's a tool that you use to show us oh. value. Okay. I will look back at my. Obviously, we have not had it out this year because not out during the winter season for obvious reasons with snow plows and snow. Understood. Yep. And then when the snow went away, the health concerns came into effect. So we have not had it out in any of our towns yet. No. I'm just no. very data driven as well. And so that's why, I mean, I've got this information and I've kind of ran some calculations based on the report that showed up in the town report. Uh, for town meeting day from the sheriff's department and I'm assuming that that data that the sheriff's department set for the town report in March was specific to Arlington, correct? Do we know that? Correct. You're talking about that the sheriff's have? Yes, the yes. sheriff's, yes. Correct. So that's where I struggle to try and run the return on investment based on those numbers. So we don't, I mean, we don't guarantee a town we're going to make money when we do this. We can't guarantee it's going to, you're going to make a profit on us, and we're going to pay. You're going to pay. I mean, in tickets, we do. Because then that town tell my deputy, you have to write tickets. You have to write tickets. Then I don't give them no discretion. I, I don't. I, that's just. You know, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not looking to make a profit on it. I'm just looking purely at what we spent versus what I see in the data. It doesn't. I struggle with the value there. And uh, usually the radar card, we put it out when we, the town calls and they got a particular role they want it on. Understood. We get that a lot of towns to call. We, I did, I set up the list in order where they want it, and I run it through the town's custom kind on the roads they're looking for. Did, so, did you ever not get any of the other data that I sent to town? I never to saw any of the other data that you sent to Keith. I can't help that. Um, the data was sent. We could print out data all the time. Yes. Sir. So any of the stuff or stuff. Also, you know, I think some benefits not monetary either. You know, we also got to consider preventative benefit of I, having mm -hmm. officer presence. Yep. At the same time. And um, there's, there's no way to calculate the return on investment of an officer sitting on the side of the road. You very well know that. I very well knows that. You know. So. Uh, you mentioned, asked if anybody had seen the data. Right. Are, and the answer is no. Never. I'm and sorry. That, no. Yep. Okay, but that's going to change. Yes. Transparency here is that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good news. Uh, my question is, and I'm not looking, you know, you asked what our concern is. Yeah. Well, put it right on the table, it's $45,000 a year. And obviously, I think if we're Responsible, we're looking at uh, being doing due diligence on that forty-five thousand dollars taxpayers' money. Are we yep. getting a, a return? And that's kind of the, I can, the discussion I, I, to start. Yeah, and what I can say is, when there is a deputy up here on one of the twenty hours a week, if a call does come in, last time is much quicker than a trooper coming from either the barracks or from wherever they are positioned. Classic example, in May, there was a call of a homeowner holding a person at gunpoint here on Main Street in, or the main drag here in Arlington. The deputy was less than a quarter of a mile away sitting on the side of the road. He got to the call as the state police were still dispatching it to the troopers. That is a fairly quick response time for, for a deputy that was in the town of Arlington patrolling. 
Now we also do patrol logs every time a deputy's out. You guys, no one, they never, we can send them with their bill like we've done with other towns if you're looking for that. Which tells you when the deputy's in the town exactly what he's doing, what role he's been on, and what he's written at that time. Yeah, because I have no clue, and I mean, I think because your deputy typically signs on to be out on a directed patrol in Arlington and Sunderland is how it comes across the radio. So I know that your deputies broadcast, and so I don't know, are are you double dipping? Are you no, not? No, no, how no, are no, you doing no, that? And exactly how I, many hours and minutes? Can I clarify this for you? That is just recently changed with an email. When an officer signs on, and I will use your example, Arlington and Sunderland, they would sign on to the state police dispatcher. The state police dispatcher did not know what town for any specific time that that deputy was in that particular town. So therefore, if they're in, Ar if they're in Arlington patrolling and a call comes in Sunderland, that dispatcher would not know. So that whole process has changed as of actually last week. Okay. That when an officer has an Arlington and Sunderland patrol that day, he signs on for, I will be in Arlington patrol right now. Period, final, end of discussion. Once Arlington patrol has ended and he goes to, to the next town that he is patrolling, he clears Arlington and he will go on duty for Sunderland. That way the state police dispatcher in Westminster will know exactly what town that that patrol deputy is in at for that particular time. Okay. So that has changed. Yeah, I mean, I think the patrol logs would be helpful for us to also see exactly, you know, where the officer is going and, and more in a real time and not waiting for a yearly report to know we agree. what's happening. I have issue with paying a bill and not knowing exactly what I'm paying for. No one's ever asked for that. Um, we agree. And some towns ask for it. We never knew that Arlington was looking for this. Maybe I'm relatively new to the select board, but that would be I'm so more of a driven person when it comes to Captain micromanagement. And, I and Sergeant Bravada have already talked about this. That is not a problem that that can be made available because it's a every two week cycle, correct? Filling cycle. Filling cycle. I don't know. Filling cycles every two yeah. weeks, correct? Two weeks. Yeah. So therefore, yes. we can get you that data when, when the daily logs at that particular time. Yeah. Like, like I said, we, we already discussed that prior to coming up here, and we feel that for accountability, you deserve it. Probably I more critical because I don't it. have any uh, prior history to know exactly where those funds have been spent or what your deputies have been doing. So I apologize if I'm a little uh, boardroom critical, but I, since I've never seen that data, um, that is definitely why I'm critical. I don't, and that, we, that could help prove to me the value in having the sheriff's department or a contracted service of uh, law enforcement agency in Arlington, but I do need to see that data. And with this, and when you're, when you're like, let's say I got someone signed Arlington for four hours in, in Sunland Court for an eight-hour shift. A lot of times the deputies, I know I did when I used to do it, um, we spend an hour or so in Arlington, go to Sunland for an hour or so, then come back to Arlington, for, just go back and forth. And it makes you, it spreads your time out, makes you look like you're in both towns. A lot I get it. I get it. So but our deputies have been now instructed to Yep. Sign on with a specific count. And all the, the captain sent that email out last week? Uh, yes, because Lieutenant but, Moser said that the dispatch was having trouble knowing what how we're actually going right. to so <laughs> Therefore, we have already taken that forward step. Okay. It's like stereo at my house. I have three, there's my partner's. Uh, executive director for an EMS agency, so I listen all the time, and it's kind of in the back of my head, but that was one thing that really bothered me, I was that they're, they're like, oh, I'm like, so where are they, and what are they? You're finding no issues, you're finding no argument. No, I'm not, I just, that was a concern that I had. And I think the biggest thing is communication, like, I do 40 hours a week in Dorset, that's my town, that's where I am, um, and I work very closely with the select board and the town manager, and I think if there's a problem, let us know. If there's something you need, 
let us know. We're more than happy to accommodate. And I think to Tim's point, I mean, historically we've had this contract, but we just, as select board members, and probably you've been on the select board a lot longer, Cynthia, um, to know like if exactly what we've been spending the money on. We usually just get a, a bill for it and don't know exactly like what the patrol was or any of that information on what we're really spending the money on. Well, we've always um, certainly seen the sheriffs around town regularly and we've always told the department what our priorities are, you know, like the bat and kill during the summer or center of town during devil's night or whatever. We've always done that. But um, we never sought to say exactly where you should go because it's better that you decide where you should go. I but do think I, I do think that the reporting back would be really good. Perfect. And Perfect. and I think now you know you have the data. <laughs> we were not getting all the data. And now we can get the data. I think that's really good. Why don't I take it one step further for the town of Arlington? Okay. Because Todd works days. I work days most of the time. I don't try to get hold of me. Why don't you make me the liaison with Todd so if there is a concern amongst the board or the town itself, I can communicate it to me. I can come back to the sheriff and to Andy and our team and come up with a solution for that. Okay. Todd, are you in agreement with that? Well, uh, if the board wants me to do that, I certainly will. I just threw you because I, I know you. Yeah, <laughs> I just threw you under the bus because I know you. I have to make this very clear, and this is not personal against any any of the three of you. There are nine state troopers that live in this community, so if I'm struggling finding uh, a reason to spend forty six thousand dollars when there's nine of us that live here. Um, that's a dollars and cents thing for me. It's not about safety or patrol or the value of what you guys do. Well, I don't want you to do. You know, diminish that. But for me personally, um, there are really nine of us that are here. So I have to now justify why charging tax, why approving taxpayers to spend $46,000 above and beyond that is something that I have to. That's, a, that's something that you guys have to vote on. Yeah. Yeah.